What is going on guys? It's Nick from Surf Casting Island. Today's topic of discussion is going to be locating structure and how to fish it. This is a very important topic and I believe locating structure and fishing it is the piece to one of the pieces to the various pieces of the puzzle when it comes to catching striped bass, especially large ones of size, anything, you know, quote unquote big this day and age. I know I've mentioned it in previous lectures, I believe to be anything 20 pounds and over. Also considering the fact this is gonna be a surf casting topic, not a boat topic. So to start off, I believe that, you know, no matter what structure you're targeting, you have to understand the nature of it, okay? What does all structure have in common? Well, the answer to that question is that all structure pretty much results in some sort of depth change or drop. Whether that be a sandbar, whether that be in the boulder fields, whether that be muscle beds or a marsh line or bog, whatever you want to call it, there has to be some sort of change in depth to draw these fish. More structure will draw more fish, especially striped bass, because that is in their nature. They are a structure-oriented fish. So I'm going to get into shortly about looking at wave patterns and how to identify consistently um, where these drops may be, so on and so forth, into depth. Stay tuned. So I know I've mentioned in previous videos of how to locate structure whether you're fishing a jetty inlet or a back bay but every situation could be different whether you're looking for buoy markers breaking waves so on and so forth the focus of this discussion is to um, introduce or inform you guys on what to look for that is a consistent factor with all these different terrains that you fish to target striped bass and that is going to be rip lines. Rip lines are a dead giveaway of a change in depth. As a general rule of thumb, because there are always exceptions to the general rule, shallow water, shallow depths will always have more of a ripple and nervous water as opposed to deeper depths, which tend to flatten out. So what does this mean to a fisherman and a surf caster in, ge um, in general? Well, you want to fish the edges of the rips because that is where the direct line of contact with the change in depth occurs, okay? Um, it is almost pretty much guaranteed at one point or another there will be fish, striped bass, bluefish, whatever you're targeting. Um, they will be there at one point or another depending on the moon and tide phase, so on and so forth, which I will also get into because there are certain areas that I fish, back bays, inlets, open beach, so on and so forth, that um, produce on a certain tide and you know maybe factoring in a certain wind, don't wanna to get too complicated, but having those favorable conditions to the area you're fishing will make your bycatch and your catch overall that much greater. So, I'm going to get into why wind and tide and the direction of these drops are so important as to creating a bite because the tide in essence is the bite. So if you want to make a rather wide generalization, there are two factors to take into consideration that causes bait to move. That being wind and that being tide. In terms of tide, the moon is what dictates how strong the incoming push or the outgoing pull will be. So pretty much you don't want to be fishing a spot where you have wind against tide. It's almost as if they cancel each other out. They're in neutral. Okay, so I'm going to take one of my back bay spots I uh, fish for example it comes off a main body of water and shoots into a creek 
on an incoming tide, the um, the tide moves from left to right, per se, right? So say that's east and west. So if you have an incoming tide with an east wind, let's say hypothetically speaking, that's going to cause a great movement of bait as well as predatory fish like striped bass and bluefish. Now factor in the tide, I mean, excuse me, not the tide, the moon phases, the new and full moon. Now you have all the factors playing in because like I said, the moon is what dictates how strong that tide will be, okay? The last piece to the puzzle is figuring out which way or how that structure to the area you're fishing sets up, okay? Because if the tide's moving from east to west and the drop is to the west, you have the golden ticket. Because all those fish have to do is sit right on the edge of that rip and wait for that bait uh, wait for those bait fish to fly on by because they have to exert pretty much no energy whatsoever using that change in depth as a current break considering which way the current's moving. So let's say you have an outgoing tide now. There's no advantage to fishing that spot as well as there's no advantage to those fish being there because that leaves them out in the wide open, the pocket is totally exposed when the tide's moving from west to east outgoing. You get what I'm saying? Um, then you'd have to figure out a spot where you have a drop on an outgoing tide that dumps to the east because then the fish will use that barrier as a safe haven, another area, another area to ambush these bait fish. Okay, you see where I'm going with this? So you always want to find uh, a spot where the tide aligns with the drop in the direction it's going. And number two, you never want to fish a spot where you have wind against tide because that'll just hold up the bait and typically the fish will striped bass I should say will tend to not feed as well um, if you have unfavorable factors have you will all right last but not least um, the final point I would like to mention is because I know some people are probably going to ask me is Nick how do you know what side of the structure to fish and why um, well there's a rather basic approach to this um, I believe that if you just look at the water, okay, you picture, you see the rip lines, the nervous water into the calm water, you always want to be, your lure wants to be on that calmer water side because that's where the fish are going to be. It's the deeper water. The fish aren't going to be sitting up over the hump most of the time unless the tide slacks off, especially if you're around a moon tide where those fish will be very, very compact buckled to the bottom because a fish striped bass no matter what it is they can't afford to exert more energy and put out more energy than they could take in or else they'll die it's just the concept of efficiency being efficient choosing the right times to ambush prey the right time meaning the right tide the right condition so on and so forth so you guys kind of get the idea i hope um always targeting that rip line into the deeper water that's where those fish will be if you have the right wind tide and moon phase but that pretty much sums up how i would target structure um as a generalization i'm not going to get into every single you know inlet back bay open beach type of situation because it's just too much to cover in one video if you guys request it to me maybe i'll break it up into segments so on and so forth but i'm pretty much going to leave off here by saying you know i hope you guys learned something um and if you did please like comment hit that subscribe button and don't forget to follow me on instagram at surfcasting underscore the underscore island 
Thank you and have a nice day.